Hello YouTube viewers, this is Steve of France, also known as Master Hacks. If you're watching this on my, the Master Hacks account, then you're new. If you're watching this on my Steve of France account, you're probably one of my main subscribers. Uh, if you are a subscriber to Steve of France, please subscribe to my new account, which is the Master Hacks. There'll be a link in the description below. Now, the video I'm doing today is a newer video, updated one version for Nlight software, which allows you to make a custom XP home disk or Windows 2098 or 95 blah blah blah. There's no ones for Vista or Windows 7 quite yet. As, as far as I know. If there is, I will do a YouTube video on it. So we're just going to walk through here. We already have a copy of our uh, Windows XP home disk, the ISO, from the real CD. The software you need to do this is Magic ISO. You can do copy, you can copy a CD for free. Just click try it and it has a trial. Now what you need to do is extract the disk, which you'd be using WinRAR for. There's also a link in the description below for that as well. So, I'll just speed this up for you. So, here we go. Speed up process completed. Ooh. Nah, I just can't just pause it. So, here we go. We have our Windows XP home disk now all fully extracted. So, now all we need to do is open Endlight. So in Analyte, the first thing it's going to ask you to do is to find the folder or disk that you have it in. If you want a copy of the disk, you can do it straight through here, but if you're a pirate person, you're going to have an ISO, obviously. So, we're going to go in our dashboard, we're going to find XP Home, we're going to select it, and it's going to do everything for us. So I have the latest service pack, blah, 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 blah. If you don't, you can download the service pack, and I'll show you how to install that. So here is your present, but if you're new to this, you haven't done this yet. So here's the options you may select that you might want to add in or whatever you want. Service pack would be if you're upgrading your service pack from service pack 2 to service pack 3. Drivers is if you have a SATA version of a laptop. I've noticed this has been popular where you need to add the SATA drivers from your laptop manufacturer into the disk. Now you can do this through floppy version, which is impossible because no one makes floppies anymore. Or you would do a USB boot. This is a lot of headache, but this will make your life easier by just adding the drivers belonging to your computer directly straight into the disk. So for example, your sound drivers, your internet drivers, your wireless drivers, your graphics card drivers, CPU chipset drivers, all that stuff, you can infiltrate it right into the disk. Components. It allows you to remove key features of Windows if you choose to do so. So say that you don't like the uh, all of fucking coloredness taskbar for Windows XP, you can get rid of it. Or if you don't like the Fisher Price theme, you can get rid of that. You can also add new themes into it, all that stuff. Unattached is where you can put your product key, usernames, and stuff. I'll be showing that to you today. Same with options. Always click bootable ISO. We'll go through all these for you. So we'll just select them all. Components. There we go. All next. Now it's gonna think that we it's gonna think that we have a service pack installed that we need to add one. We don't. I have the latest version SP3 for Windows XP. If you need to, you can find the download links for service packs for your Windows XP at Microsoft.com. This would be your hot fixes, update packs, stuff like that. You can download these from Microsoft.com, and this is where like you get a zip file of 86 updates. You would insert it into this area here, and it would automatically install them onto the disk. So if you're on a corporate company, it might be the best thing you might want to do if you need to do a major update. Drivers. Drivers are only needed if your computer requires certain drivers to boot the disk. If you're planning to add new drivers later on down the road, you might not want to do this. If you have chipset drivers that have been the same since 2006, for example, and are SATA first time ever, and Windows XP didn't have SATA back in the day, then this might be something you want to go towards after. Or graphics card, or chipsets, or whatever drivers you may require at the time. I know drivers for Blu-ray drives are very popular. Now this part here that you're looking is um, compatibility. Now, we can take out certain things and functionalities where, uh, let's say that you use a lot of camcorders, Wi-Fi, um, 
a lot of software that is required. You check mark the ones you need to have, and you just hit OK. We're gonna hit cancel. Here we can find drivers that are preset, installed, and we can remove them at any time. Not only will this make your install time 100% faster, it will also make the window size smaller. So you're going to be running a very non-loaded operating system. So in other words, if you don't need this, let's see, for example, Blaster fucking Nachi Remover Tool. I don't know what that is or what it does, but say that you need don't need that you uncheck market it's no longer in your system 16-bit support if you're like anyone else and uses a flat screen and has a computer that's newer than 2002 you will never have 16-bit um, hardware software here we go brother devices CPU I never I don't run Intel so I don't need an Intel CPU chipset put into there or anything like that all that kind of stuff will help you make your boot times a lot faster. Let's go next. Here we have our product key. This is an actual product key but you won't be able to see it because I'm going to blank it out. Your uh, stuff you have able, pre-install, enabled, well, hide pages, turn off your firewall by our default, turn off hibernation, blah, 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 blah. Run once. This is where you add a command. Say that you do um, Windows update and you need to do it right off the bat instantly because you have a very unprotected network. You can put this here in the command and it will actually boot up the application to that website and start loading it for you the instant you log on. Users. This is where you can add a new user. For example here we can click and remove because we don't need him. Add and the name will be down here. So when you set it all up with your password and all that stuff you will be able to have a user already pre-selected and have it done. Skips the uh, blue annoying screen with the music. ID, network, and full name. If you have a work group, organization, full name, whatever you need for your computer, you can set up here. Your region codes. So when you do the install, say custom whatever it is, won't show up because you already have pre-selected. Components, once again, we won't be touching those. Your display, color depth, 32 bit true color. Your screen resolution, only if you have the graphics card drivers installed currently. Automatic updates, you can choose to disable them or run them all the way. Desktop themes. Say that you're running a custom theme right now that you really like and say that it's a Windows Vista custom theme kind of look or Windows 7 kind of theme. You can actually uh, insert local themes and it will actually add them into the new disk. Network settings is if you only do static IP address, which you want to do and just have if you, if you do this and you already know what I'm talking about. Let's move on. Yeah, shut up. So we have to add new users. There we go. Now here we have some options. This is where we can remove stuff, able stuff, disable stuff, kind of things. Um, I would not really mess around with this unless you really know what you're doing. Tweaks. Um, here I see that um, your speed overall disk size again as it was before with the components. So mess around with this. So you probably end up if you did a really big dig down of all your hardware and that disk was dedicated to that one computer, you could probably have a 300 megabyte, maybe a 200 megabyte operating system installed mm -hmm. instead of a 600 megabyte. Anyhow, it's gonna say, do you want to start the process? You want to hit yes. And what this will do is it will make an ISO disk for you. So here we go. Integrated drivers, we added blah blah blah. 0 0.17. Hit next. Now it's gonna ask you, do you want to create an image, direct burn an image, burn an image, for example, we already made one, or erase a rewritable disk. That only replies to plus in it if it's not closed. If you run Windows XP, it closes whenever you burn something. So we're gonna hit direct burn, and it's gonna select one of our drives. I'm not going to use any of my drives right now to burn one because I don't need one. So we're going to create an image. We're going to call it Windows XP Home. And we're going to hit Create ISO. We're going to save it to our desktop. Windows XP Home SP3. Update it. Hit yes if you have a firewall by the way. Yeah, save. 
Now what this will do is going to prepare and it's going to make the ISO for you so you can burn it later on down the road. So say for example the thick paper you're currently using does not have a um, DVD burner but your friend does have one you can put it on a flash drive and bring it to his house. So we'll quickly let this finish, it won't take long at all. There we go. Now we hit next. And then we hit finish. And bada bing, bada boom, there's our new disc. ISO form, ready to rock and roll. And that's how you pretty much copy a Windows disc, XP, maybe Vista 7, I haven't tried it yet. Inside Enlight, which is software that allows you to customize your Windows disc to what your needs are and not have anything that you don't need. Prime example, Intel drivers if you run AMD chipset and an AMD processor. Anyway hey guys, I'm Master Hacks, also known as Steven LaFrance on my other channel. Don't forget to subscribe to Steven LaFrance or The Master Hacks. See you later.